Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, and thank you for joining today's web conference, Navigating USA Jobs and the Federal Resume. Please note that all participant lines will be muted until the Q&A portion of the presentation. We will give you instructions on how to ask a verbal question at that time. You are welcome to submit written questions throughout the presentation, and these will be addressed during Q&A. Please select the participants menu at the top of your screen and opt to send notes to all presenters. If you have logged in using the web-based application, you may use the notes tab in the bottom right-hand side of your screen and address your question to all moderators. And with that, I'll turn the call over to LaWanda Gamble, Director, Management Support Division. Please go ahead, LaWanda. Thank you, Mary Kate. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to attend our webinar. This is the second time that we are, um, I'm sorry, facilitating this webinar, and the first time was for our IT staff when they merged with us from ITD, and now we are offering this one to all of our veterinary medical officers within veterinary services. Um, we are really targeting, in now that although we are under a hiring a modified hiring freeze within USDA. We are preparing to have various announcements across the country for permanent BMO positions within um, all of our well, yes, within all of our business units. So we wanted to make sure that we had the most up-to-date information for our BMOs so that they can apply and successfully qualify to make the search, especially those individuals that are term hires that came on board as part of the HPAI outbreak. Um, so thank you again. Um, Karen Martin, who is the Employee Personnel Service Supervisor within my staff, will be facilitating this webinar. So thank you so much again for attending. And Karen, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Luanda. Hello, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about applying for federal jobs. And I hope most of you are familiar with the process, but we're going to go through it. So let's talk about the overview. So we're going to talk about what is USA Jobs, how USA Jobs works, uh, the differences with applying to the federal sector versus private sector, the application process, and then helpful hints and websites. And I also have uh, at the end of the presentation just a short video on the resume side um, that I think will be helpful as you go through the resume process. It's short and simple, and uh, I think you're going to like it. So what is USA Jobs? It's the federal government's career website, which connects job seekers with federal employment. And it, there's opportunities worldwide on there. Uh, the website is usajobs.gov, and it's a listing of all the federal job opportunities that are out there. And it's the starting point of your application to many federal agencies, and it gives you step-by-step -step, uh, process on how to apply uh, through the system to many different uh, federal agencies, and there's hundreds that use uh, this website. And it's also a valuable online resources for a bunch of information uh, having to do with types of positions, hiring uh, practices. The federal government has some unique hiring paths that they use. And it's also run by the Office of Personnel Management, which oversees all of the federal civil service. So there's three types of services. There's the competitive service, which are the positions that are under Office of Personnel Management jurisdiction, subject to civil service laws passed by Congress. And that's to ensure that all applicants receive fair treatment in the hiring process. And then there's the accepted service, positions which are not in the competitive service or the senior executive service, and these positions have been accepted by a statute, executive order, or by the Office of Personnel Management. And this would include student opportunities under the Pathways Program, which, is, uh, which uses this authority under Schedule D. And students are, are under this until, it, or if they are converted, then they're converted to a position in, in the competitive service. And then you also have your senior executive service, which are your SESs that are above uh, level GS-15, and they're in, a, in their own separate category. Okay. 
so there's a couple of different candidate categories. First, you have your public category, which are jobs open to all U.S. citizens or nationals, and you would apply to these jobs if you've never worked for the federal government or if you are currently working for the gov federal government but do not have a, a status eligibility uh, so that you can apply for a merit promotion, because those are only open to current federal employees or employees with reinstatement el eligibility. But if you are a term or a temp appointment, you do not have status, therefore you couldn't apply to those merit promotion uh, opportunities unless, of course, you had reinstatement el eligibility or prior civil service. Okay, well, you could apply. I'm not going to tell anybody they can apply for anything, but what would happen is you wouldn't get too far because the uh, USA Jobs uh, system would send you a notice saying that you didn't meet the area of consideration. Uh, so then there's the status, uh, which are also, also the merit promotion, and there's also special higher authority uh, categories. So, of course, merit promotion are for current federal employees with career or conditional status. Well, like I said, former employees, their career status, and reinstatement eligibility. And the OA candidates can also apply to merit promotion, and those, that's the uh, Veterinary Equal Employment Opportunity Act. And what that is is veterans can apply to merit promotion announcements. However, in those cases, their veteran preference is not a factor. They apply like everyone else. And then you have your special hiring authorities, such as the military veterans appointments, Veteran Readjustment um, Authority, Disabled uh, Vets, and there's also Persons with Disabilities under Schedule A, Returning Peace Corps, and we also have Direct Hire Authority, also known as DHA, and that is given to agencies fulfilling critical need positions, and of course USDA has Direct Hire Authorities for VMOs, because they are in that category. Okay. So these are the different types of federal employment uh, appointments. Like I said, career conditional, um, and that's a permanent appointment that requires one year probationary period. An employee becomes career after three years of substantially continuous service, and of course they're eligible for benefits. Then you have your temporary appointment, and those are uh, one year or less with a specific expiration date. They do not serve a probationary period but they're not eligible for promotion or transfer because they don't have status, and they're typically not eligible for benefits unless, of course, their appointment may be extended for a long period of time. Then things may change there. Now, a term appointment, they work for a limited period of time, lasting more than a year, but not to exceed four years, and they require a trial period, and their appointment does not provide conversion eligibility to another term or a permanent appointment. So they're considered non-status as well, and they are eligible for benefits. Okay, on the next page, um, for those of you who are familiar with USA Jobs, this is what it looks like now. This is the front page. And if you've been on there lately, you'll notice it looks a little different because, because they've changed things again. Uh, as of April of this year, they've updated all their filters. So um, this is what you see in, um, at the main page. Now, before they changed everything, there used to be a little bullet under the search uh, bar, and there used to be two bullets to choose from, and it would just say, all U.S. citizens or federal employees. And you could choose your filter right then before you went to the next page. But what they did now is they kind of left it over, open to general search category, but when you're on that maiden page, if you scroll down to the bottom, you will see uh, filters down at the bottom, and one of those, of course, is uh, open to all U.S. citizens or federal employees, and they've added other filters. So you could um, pretty much uh, filter out anything that you want, and uh, we'll, we'll get to more of that uh, as the pages go on. But what they've done is they've added more filters, and they also say that if you've had a, a job saved, because you can save your job search categories, if you've had one saved in the system, um, as of April 8th, 2017, they will be archived, and you'll have to uh, start a whole new search. So if you haven't been in there in a while and you had search saved, you need to go back in and uh, reestablish your search. So you can create a new one. 
Okay, so what are you looking for? The first thing you need to do, and if you haven't done this already, I suggest you do it right away, is create an account of you in USA Jobs, because that's what's going to get you started. And it's very easy. It's a step-by-step -step process. Once you go on there, and then you uh, complete your profile with your personal information. So once you have uh, an account established, you have to put a, ro a resume on there, okay? And then uh, you can create your job searches and save them. And then uh, you have a couple of different ways to do a resume. They have a resume builder where uh, it's all set up in the system and you just kind of fill in the sections. Or you can upload your own resume from a Word doc. And in the system, it will let you have five resumes on account. Okay, you can also upload and save any documents. Uh, for instance, your last SF50, uh, for your military service, your DD-214, uh, an unofficial transcript, and we'll talk about transcripts in a minute. And then uh, once you, you know, have your uh, account established, your resume in, uh, then you can start applying for jobs. Okay, and then um, once you have this all established, because if you're not familiar with it, you know, to get it set up, it might be a little daunting, but then once it's set up, then you'll have a more personalized experience and you can kind of see where everything goes and, and make sure you tailor uh, your resume and your account to what you're looking for. Okay, so let's uh, look at just a couple differences uh, for the application process for federal employment versus private sector. Uh, basically, federal government, it's guided by the Office of Personnel Management, so there you have to follow the guidelines. And you have to provide a detailed resume, okay? And that's, that's very different uh, because private sector, they usually have some form of application package. In the federal government, your resume is your application. So you have to make sure that your resume is detailed um, and you talk about all, all the duties and responsibilities you've had uh, and gear them towards the position that you're applying for, okay? Um, keep it up to date and also, uh, like I mentioned, supporting documentation. You can upload that right into your account in USA Jobs and have it, have it there so when you apply for for jobs, you can click on it and include it uh, when you're applying. Okay, and um, private sector says you may or may not be contacted. The federal government, it depends on how far you get in the process, and we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that, because um, you want to make it to the point where your resume was referred to the selecting official. That's, that's to the point you want to get. Okay. So, like I said, federal agencies utilize USA Jobs. So they post, that's where they post all their vacancies. The vacancy is also known as Job Opportunity Announcements, or JOAs, uh, which is kind of like an HR term that you'll hear. Uh, so, in addition to setting up an account in USA Jobs, you may be transferred to an agency's website to complete an application. And it all depends on the agency that you're applying to. There's many different agencies out there. They all have different uh, application systems. And some will direct you to their own site uh, to complete uh, part of the process. But it always allow you to come back to USA Jobs to, you know, to do that part of it. So you just got to kind of follow uh, where you're going in the announcement and just pay, pay uh, particular attention to that announcement as far as what's required, the duties, uh, the application process, and, and where it takes you, because there's also going to be uh, a questionnaire uh, response that you're going to have to um, complete, and sometimes that's where it takes you to different places to do that. It depends on the agency. Okay, so resume tip. Um, take your time to build your resume and create the resume for the job that you're interested in. Do not wait to the closing date to start the process because you're, you're not giving yourself enough time, okay? Uh, you need to be detailed and specific in your description in each of your resume sections. 
can provide details of your experience, paid or unpaid, volunteer experience uh, will help you too, as well as your education. An important preview your resume and make sure you read the announcement closely. Uh, anything in the announcement, any of the duties and experience in the announcement uh, that it's calling for that you have, make sure that it is covered in your resume, okay, because that's what's going to make the determination of whether or not you're qualified. And when you build your resume, include dates of employment and hours worked so that uh, HR, when they're rating your application, can properly assess your experience. Okay. More resume tips. Use language that best describes what you've actually done, accomplished, and learned. And if you don't have a lot of work experience, make sure you list your volunteer work, student groups, or other things that you've done. And this is important. Your resume can be longer than one page, okay? You've got to give the HR reviewers enough detail to know what your skills and accomplishments are. And I know this goes against everything you were ever taught, me too, but, uh, you know, keep your resume short to the point. Don't have too much detail. Well, in the federal government, it's, it's the opposite because, like I said, your resume is your application, and it's what's going to get you qualified. So you have to give enough detailed information to show you meet the qualifications of the position. Okay, uh, some helpful hints. Uh, like I said, you may upload supporting documentation directly into the USA Jobs. It's very easy. They show you uh, how to do it step by step. Uh, and the important uh, supporting documentation is outlined in the required documents of, the, of your uh, vacancy announcement you're applying to, so make sure you pay particular attention to where it says required documents because you don't want to miss an opportunity that, uh, by forgetting to include a document that was required, such as an SF50 transcript. Um, be honest when answering your assessment questions. Okay, that's where the questionnaire comes out and it asks you about uh, your experience in different areas. So be sure your resume can support your answers because they'll look at all that. And also, uh, HR cannot make assumptions just based on the job title or pay level. So, for, for instance, if you were a director, you know, GS-15, uh, don't assume that they know, you know, what that responsibility or title, you know, consisted of. You have to be detailed, okay? You have to meet the requirements of the job by the closing date of the announcement. So, for instance, you know, if you said you um, – you know, it says you have to have a year doing a specific thing, and you only, you've only been doing it six months. Well, you know, that, that might not help you. Okay. Um, be sure you have everything completed and you apply to the position by the closing date of the announcement. Okay, very important. Because once that uh, job announcement closes, then, you know, you, you miss considerations. You don't want that to happen. So give yourself plenty of time, go over everything, make sure everything's completed. Also, on the USA website, or USA Jobs website, is, there's a uh, help section. And within that help section is a contact us button. So if you're going through the process and, you know, you're having issues with something, you can uh, send an email to the help section and uh, discuss your issues, and you can request either a callback or they'll email you. So just keep that in mind as you're going through the process that there is a help desk. Okay, so transcripts. So transcripts, normally when you apply, it'll, it'll ask for an unofficial transcript at the application time because, of course, you know, uh, announcements are only open for, you know, a week or a couple weeks. So to get official transcripts, of course, you know, you may not be able to get them in time. So OPM realizes that and agencies realize that, so they let you submit an unofficial copy. However, if you are selected for a position, you will be required to uh, provide that official transcript before you, you start the job, just so you're aware of that. So when you're submitting your unofficial copy, make sure that your name and the name of your school is visible and legible. I've seen a lot of messy, um, you know, transcripts and probably some of that is because of, you know, getting it from the website. So just, just be sure that they're as clear as you can get them. Uh, and if you have or graduating, uh, you don't have your final yet, try to get copies that show your degree has been conferred. Okay. And then, so completing the process 
like I said, review your entire application. Um, can't stress it enough. Make sure you've covered everything because yeah, I'd hate to have somebody miss out on an opportunity just because they forgot you know, a portion of, of the application process. So make sure you got your personal information, which is in your profile, any federal questions, the assessment questions, of course your resume. Uh, and although it's not required, you want to have personal or professional res uh, references on your resume, uh, you know, that couldn't hurt because if you are being considered for a job, um, I'm sure the selecting official would want to have uh, references to call. And then, of course, submit some morning documentation by following the requirements of the job opportunity announcement. Again, very important. Make sure you have everything that's required. So what happens after you apply? You'll get an, a USA Jobs notice, okay, and it'll tell you your application has been submitted. And then once your application gets reviewed, uh, you'll receive a further notice to indicate whether or not your application will be qualified and that your application was referred to the selecting official. That's what, that's what you're waiting for. That's what you want to see. Because then at that point, then you may be contacted for an, for an interview. And depending on, you know, the agency and the type of job, uh, you may or may not be contacted for an interview. It all depends. But you're hoping that you are. And bottom line is you may not hear anything until a final selection is made and USA Jobs does their updates. They may be working on a selection and they're going through that process and they don't finalize it until that selection is made. In the meantime, you're kind of waiting here and, uh, you know, they have you in suspense. But eventually you will see an update in the job to say, you know, if you were referred, say you weren't selected or someone else was selected or that, that type of message. However, if you were being considered, you would probably get a phone call before all that happens. And just some more information, some helpful links. Uh, like I said, USA Jobs has the help section. They have, have a how-to section. There's a bunch of information on there on, on applying and sample resumes. There's also a, a frequent, uh, frequently answered questions on, in the help area. And also, uh, if you've never been on US, sorry, www.opm.gov, that's the um, OPM's official website, there is a wealth of information out there. You'd be surprised you could find anything out there. Uh, of course, the qualification standards are out there on jobs. Say you're applying for a job in another state, you want to know what the locality is for that area, all the pay charts are out on there. Uh, just, just when you get a chance, just go out, on it, go out on there and check it out and just put anything in the search uh, button. You'd be surprised. There's just so much information for federal employees out there. And also, if you're applying to a specific job opportunity announcement, there's always a point of contact in that announcement. Uh, sometimes it's a person, or sometimes it's just like an office, or a resume, or an announcement center, or uh, some, some uh, form of contact, whether it's a person with a number or just a phone number to call. A lot of uh, agencies kind of use like call centers, but if, if you call, someone will get, get back to you if you have any questions on a particular announcement that you're applying to. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Do we have any questions? We do have two questions that are submitted already. As a quick reminder, I would like to let the participants know that they just visit written questions by clicking participants in the top menu and choosing to send note to all presenters. Those of you who have logged in using the web-based application, you'll see a notes tab in the bottom right-hand side of your screen, and you can submit a question through that. Another way you can submit questions or ask questions is over your phone lines. You can press pound two, that's pound two, to ask a verbal question over the phone. If you have used a voice over computer, uh, connection, you can click the raised hand emoticon in your top toolbar. So now I'll go through the written questions we've received so far. The first one says, I have a lengthy work experience. How far back should you list previous jobs on your resume? Hmm, good question. Uh, that would depend on uh, the job that you're applying for. So for instance, um, if you're applying for 
um, say a GS13, and there was, this was stuff you were doing when you were at like a GS5 level, I wouldn't include that, but I would include any relevant information or experience that has to do with that job you're applying for at that level. Does that answer your question, I hope? Okay, our second question asks, what is an SF50? Oh my goodness, that's my bad. Um, that's because I come from HR, I just realized, you know, I just assume everybody knows what an SF50 is. Uh, it's actually the notice, notification of personnel action that um, translates any uh, action that's done with you when you're hired. For instance, if you're hired as a career conditional employee, you'll get an SF50 um, notification of personal action saying, you know, your name, clear conditional appointment, effective, whatever date it is. So that's your official record of your appointment. Uh, if you get promoted, you'll get get a new SF50, notification of personal action with your new job information. When we get a pay adjustment, you'll get one. Anytime something happens that affects your job and your status or your salary, uh, that, that will uh, populate an SF50. Notification okay. of personal action. Okay. Our next question asks, does it make a difference if a resume is uploaded or written using the USA Jobs Resume Builder? Uh, no, it normally doesn't. However, I I remember seeing an application, or, or I'm sorry, a job announcement that actually required, it said, uh, for this job you're required to use the Resume Builder. So just to be safe, I would have both. I would uh, I would have the resume builder one on handy just in case that ever happens. But you can use your own resume, and like I say, you're allowed up to five on your account, and you could just copy and paste, uh, you know, resume and then upload upload it into the uh, the document. And it's very easy. It shows you how to do it step by step. And we do have uh, one of our participants waiting to ask a question over the phone line. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Hi, yes. Um, in the past, um, I you have... Your line is open, so you can go ahead and ask your question. You might have your own device on mute, so you can just double check that. Hello? Okay. Let's see. That... Try one more time. Okay, go ahead, Stephen. Okay, it's Stefan. Oh, I beg your pardon, Stefan. I beg your pardon. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I am had a question, and it's related to uploading your resume versus building it in the system. In the past, when I've used an uploaded resume, I've had trouble um, with the hiring official getting my cover letters, and and well, the cover letter in particular. Um, and I've heard people who say that when they build it in the system getting that cover letter attached with all your documents is easier. Do, have you heard that? Well, a cover letter would be a separate, because um, it's not part of the resume builder. The resume builder is just a resume. So that would have to be part of your own resume that you upload. Okay. Because I, and, and, you, and, you, and maybe that's a good point to, to upload the cover letter with the resume so it's uh all one document, but I am have had right. uh, a lot of trouble uh, getting my cover letter to to the hiring official in, in the past. So I don't know if you have tips on on making sure all your documents are get to to where they're supposed to go. Yeah, I would say include it as part of the resume, and and then have it one document. This way, if, you know, if it's two separate documents, something might happen. Yeah, I would make it one one document. Thank you. You're welcome. And we have had several other written questions submitted. The next one asks, do, do a foreign qualified vet whose transcripts are accredited by the American Collegiate Institute have to get it done from the AVMA? I... Um, I don't know for sure off the top of my head. Um, I believe in in the um, the announcement for the particular job, it would give you that information. And uh, 
I'm just, I just happen to be looking at a, a, an old announcement right here, and I'm reading graduates of foreign veterinary medical schools that are not accredited by AVMA on education, and it says refer to the AVMA website. And it says, must meet one of the following requirements. And there's a whole list of things. So what I'm going to do is send out the, um, as a follow-up, I'm going to send out that AVMA uh, website and, and this information. And who was that that asked the question? The person who asked the question is the here Ahmed. Okay. And I'll send you a copy of all the written questions that were submitted at the conclusion of the webinar today. Okay, thank you so much. Sure. So our next question that uh, was submitted asks, um, I apologize that I joined late. When will the recording of this presentation be made available? Hmm. Mary Kate, do you know how long it takes? <laughs> Let me just check what you have ordered and I can get a better idea. I believe that you have um, a WMV with embedded closed captioning. That usually takes about a week. Okay. As soon as it's ready, we will get it out. Okay. Um, next question, where do you get your most recent SF50? Uh, it would be in your EOPF, your Electronic Official Personnel Folder, and everybody should have access to that through the, um, you know, through the portal. All right, the next question asks, there are times when we need clarification which led to contact with the POC in the job announcement. If they refer to AVMA and they also don't have the answer, what should we do then? Uh, I'm not sure I'm following that one. Um, if, if, they're, if they're applying to an announcement and they're making contact with the person on the announcement and they're not getting an answer, is that what I'm hearing? Um, it says, Right, so they had they needed clarification, which led them to contact the POC, point of contact in the job announce, announcement. And if they refer to AVMA, and they also don't have an answer, what to do then? Okay, well, uh, I would say if, if it's our agency, uh, you would make contact with, um, you could go through me through the HR office, but it ha if, if this is a uh, USDA announcement, you should be able to contact the person uh, in HR for USDA or, or APHIS or whatever, wherever you're applying in this agency. If it's another agency, all I could say is uh, follow up. Uh, I'm sure there's an address on there, um, and I would write to that address. And, and uh, you know, if you have the name of the person you spoke to and you're not getting information, I, I would follow it up that way. I mean, it, you know, I don't know what else to tell you in that respect. But if our, if it's our agency that you're talking about, we have ways to follow up if, if you're missing information. Okay, the next question submitted asks, if I have multiple SS50s in my OPM file, is it necessary to attach all of them or just the most recent? The most recent. Okay, next question. You mentioned that after April, any saved job searches were archived. Are all my saved documents still accessible in US jo USA jobs, transcripts, et cetera? Oh, yeah, your, your documents should be there. It's just that the searches that you um, prepared, because they changed all the filters in the system, you know, like how you search, that's why. Uh, but you're, if you have an account established, I just lost my video. Okay, if you have an account established, um, then all your documents should still be there. Okay. okay, next question asks, how important is it to have a cover letter? Um, I would say it's not as important as having a complete and concise resume. That's what's going to get you qualified because that's what you want to do, okay? You want to have your resume get you qualified and get you to the selecting official. Okay, so a cover letter, I mean, it's nice and all, 
But what you really need to concentrate is, is on your resume and what's in there and make sure that that job you're applying to, if you do any of those duties and have any of that experience, that you capture it in your resume. Okay. And the next question asks, is it possible to still get feedback from HR for an application from 15 months ago that was not referred? Um, I'm not sure. You could try. Um, um, they use, uh, they, each agency uses different um, systems. Uh, I know they use eRecruit here. I'm not sure if you could still access uh, the reply uh, through the system at this point, uh, but you can certainly try. I don't know if they archive them after a certain period of time. All right, another question was submitted asking, can you make sure you send the most recent SF50, which has the grade and steps specified on it? Not all of that, not all of them have that information. That's true. It, it should should have your most recent um, grade on there. And that's why I said your most recent 50 should have, should have that information. And again, as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question over your phone line, you can do so by pressing pound two on your telephone keypad to enter the question queue. You will hear a notification when your line is unmuted. Voice over computer users, click the raise hand emoticon in the top toolbar. And again, you're also welcome to submit written questions to the different features within our software. And Karen, while we're waiting for more questions to come in, would you like to go over the writing your federal resume document? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so we're going to move on to writing your federal resume. Uh, so this is... Well, you know, whether you're a current federal employee or new to the federal government, your resume is the primary way you communicate your education, skills, and experience. Like I said, it's the most important thing. So like I said, the federal government does not require a standard job application. Your resume is your application. That's why it's so important. Um, hiring agencies state in the job announcement the qualification requirements of the job. And you have to meet those requirements to be considered. Okay, that's the bottom line. And in the JOA, they talk about the level of experience needed, the amount of experience, the education, and the training. And after applying, the hiring agency uses the information in your resume to, have, to verify if you have, required, to have the required qualifications as stated in the job announcement, job opportunity announcement. And once they determine who is minimally qualified, the agency may use other assessments, such as structured interviews or testing, to determine who the best qualified candidates are. Okay, so to include in your resume, okay, federal jobs often require you have experience in a particular type of work for a certain time period. So that's why it's very important to always include the month and year that you began and ended each job, and also include the number of hours. So if you were full-time, show that you worked full-time. And be sure to provide the level and amount of experience to demonstrate you meet the qualifications. Again, for instance, whether you serve as a project manager or a team member helps to illustrate your level of experience. Include examples of experience and accomplishments that improve your ability to perform the task at the level required of the job, as stated in the JOA. Okay, so that's, that's what they're talking about when they say, a specialized experience. Okay, what to include in your resume? Make it easy to understand exactly what you did. Okay, if you don't provide the information required to hiring, for the hiring seat to determine your qualification, you might not be considered. They, they have to uh, you know, make the term, determination based on what you put in there. And reverse chronicle, chronological order resume is preferred because that they go take the most experience uh, present experience and work their way back. Okay, so that's that's how you should show it. Um, and it shows the sample there, reverse chronological order, uh, the dates, how many hours, your salary, 
and then your experience accomplishments, and then you work backwards. And it says experience and accomplishments can be written in either bullet or paragraph format. Um, and I've seen it both ways. I mean, bullets are okay as long as you give enough information. I mean, it shouldn't, you know, be just like a long line, or there should be enough information there to describe uh, the duty or responsibility that you're talking about so it's clearly understood. Okay, customizing your resume. You may want to tailor your resume to the JOA rather than sending out the same resume for every job. And that's why it's a good reason uh, that the, they allow five resumes uh, on your um, USA Jobs account because um, you have you can have different ones on handy if you're you know going in different areas as far as your your career path. You want to uh, apply to different types of jobs, and this helps you match your com competencies, knowledge, skills, and abilities, and experience to the requirements for each job. Be sure to review the JOA, especially duties and qualifications section, as I mentioned, uh, to make sure so that you uh, can be sure your resume uh, addresses those. Uh, preview the, the assessment questions found on how you will be evaluated section of each uh, job announcement. And there's usually uh, you know, some form of assessment questionnaire. So uh, there, there's a way that you can uh, preview it before you fill it out. There's usually a link that pulls it up for you. And again, you'll have to clearly show how your skills and experiences match the qualifications of the JLA. Okay, and other information to include, your resume should emphasize your strengths. You should include everything you've done that relates to the job you are seeking and leave out experience that isn't relevant because you want to have, you know, your job, your resume talks for you. So you want it to, to say, you know, what you want to say about what you could bring to that job, the experience you have, responsibilities, and, uh, you know, how, what you've, you've done relates to what's being uh, offered in the job announcement. And then it says, where it makes sense, present your achievements and accomplishments with numbers, percentages, or dollars. And you can find this information on things like performance reviews, previous job descriptions, awards, or letter of com uh, recommendation. And then they have a sample of measuring your accomplishments statements such as improve the efficiency of document processing by 25% over the previous years. year shows in concrete terms what you've accomplished. And then other information. So like we had said, don't limit yourself to including just paid work experience. For example, volunteer work and roles in community organizations may provide valuable experiences and demonstrate your ability to do the job. Hiring agencies are more interested in the content of your resume rather than the length of it. And you do not have to eliminate your resume to one or two pages. I, I've seen them much longer. Uh, as long as it's relevant information, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter if it's two, three, or four. Okay, adding your resume to USA Jobs. You start by building your profile, then decide whether to upload your resume, build one using USA Jobs, or both. I recommend doing both only because, you know, it's good to have and you're allowed up to five anyway. Um, just to have that resume built in one on hand, just in case you come across that one announcement that says that's the way they do it. So USA Jobs lets you upload or build multiple resumes. So you have the option to customize each one to the different types of jobs you're interested in. And it shows you a picture of the, the tabs in the system that you would choose, either build new or upload your, your own. More tips, use plain language, avoid using acronyms. And I just did that when I just said SF50 and I'm explaining what that was. Uh, so your resume is clearly understood. Of course, check your resume for spelling and grammar errors. And then it's always good to have someone with an eye for detail review it. It's always good to have somebody look at it for you. So again, don't forget, customizing your resume shows how you meet the requirements of the job. List your most recent experience first. 
Include your experience and education related to the qualifications of that job. And writing a, an effective resume shows the agency you are the person they need. And like you said, the resume builder is, is a great guide as to what needs to be included in your resume. And um, next, um, resume writing video, there's a link to a little uh, YouTube video. It's about five minutes long, and I thought it would be good to show. Uh, kind of puts it all together for you. So Mary Kay, could you bring that up? Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, as we go to show this video to you, uh, would like you to know that the sound for the video will rely on audio from your computer. So please make sure that the computer speakers that you the speakers on the computer you're using are unmuted and you can turn the volume up. Also please be aware the playback of this video will be contingent on your bandwidth. So once the video ends, at least for us, we're gonna wait a good minute or at least thirty seconds to let anyone else who's a little bit behind catch up. So please stand by while we launch the video. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope that you enjoyed the video that we played. Please note that there will we can always send out the um, link to that video in case you didn't have a chance to either see the whole thing or if you had any problems viewing it. Um, at this time, we would like to um, turn it back to questions. If you have any additional questions, you can either ask them over your phone line, simply press pound 2 on your telephone keypad, or if you did voice over computer, you can see the raised hand emoticon in the top toolbar. And we had received another written question that was submitted asking for GS 13 to 14 positions. USDA asks for at least one year service in the federal government. If someone had experience outside the federal government but doesn't have that one year of experience within it, will he or she be considered for that position? Uh, I would have to look at that job announcement to see how it's written. Uh, it would depend on um, what that experience was. Um, and, this, and this would be, you know, this candidate would be evaluated by HR uh, and they, they would make the determination on whether or not the experience was acceptable. So they would review it and make that determination. Okay, we did have a thank you. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. This was very helpful. Another oh, thank you. Submitted. Uh, thank you for making this webinar available. It was very helpful. Okay, just a couple things um, that came to mind uh, about the transcripts. Not all jobs require transcripts, just so you know. Of course, VMOs do, uh, but it, it depends on the announcement, um, the job that you're applying for. It will specify clearly in the announcement uh, whether you know there's an education requirement and transcript is required. Okay, but it's not you know not for all jobs depends on what the job is, the grade level, etc. Uh, and also for the VMOs, I just wanted to relay something. You know, sometimes uh, you get um, to talking like a VMO and you use your terminology, and you know sometimes that may not translate over to a, a person in HR who may not know. Uh, much about what you do. So just kind of be a little more uh, descriptive rather than just using your, your terms, uh, you know, job terms and that, that type of thing. And the one, th the one takeaway I want to um, say to you in this is, as I mentioned, your resume is your application. It needs to speak for you, okay? So once you make it to the interview, you can take it from there but your resume is what's going to get you there. So be mindful of that. Okay, if there are no more questions, I'm going to turn it back over to Luanda. Are there any more questions for me at this moment? At this time, we have no questions waiting. Okay, great. I want to thank everyone for their uh, time, participation, and also if anyone from the VSET is listening, thank you again for your time, and I'm going to turn it over to Luanda. Just to echo Karen's comments, thanks to everyone. And we do, we do have on the line um, Dr. Burke Healy, the VS Associate Deputy Administrator, as of Sunday. So um, thanks again, and I'll turn it over to you, Burke, for comments. Thank you, Luanda and Karen. appreciate you taking the time to go through this, and it was very helpful. So to those on the phone, we just wanted to reiterate, as Luanda said, 
you know, many of you realize that there's been the hiring freeze and that is softening. Well, the hiring freeze has been lifted. There are some exemptions and things that we have to go through to get some positions opened up. But the new allocations that we got this year included additional funding and emergency response. And as a result of that, we hope to, by the perhaps even the end of this month, but we hope to begin to advertise some positions. The first ones that go out will be VMO positions. So it's particularly for those of you that are in term positions, uh, these will be entry level positions. So 11, 12 is how the advertisement will be announced. If you have an interest in those, I would encourage you to begin, as Karen mentioned, start working on your resume, gather those transcripts up. As the announcements will typically only be for about five days. So that doesn't give you a lot of time if you, if you wait to see the announcement and then you start trying to contact your university and get transcripts and things of that nature, you may not make the cutoff. So go ahead and, and gather that data up now so that you have it available for you and you can submit as soon as So those announcements, like I say, we, we expect we'll see them out, I don't know, it could be a couple weeks or a month, uh, but we are in a, an attempt to try to get those done pretty quickly. So. And I know many of the others of on here, uh, as was pointed out, you know, for me personally, well, I'm not going to tell you which way to do it. As a selecting official, I enjoy reading the resumes that have been uploaded. They seem to be easier to read and usually have uh, better information on them. Sometimes the ones that are set up through the resume builder can be choppy or cut up a little bit, and so they're a little bit more difficult to read. So you have the option to do either uh, in most of our announcements, so just FYI. And through the cover letter, I saw one note on there was it's required. It's absolutely not required. But if you want it to be in there and you want to include it, as Karen mentioned, include it as part of your resume. Just upload it as the first page of your resume because oftentimes as a selecting official, if it's uploaded as another document, it doesn't necessarily get forwarded to us as a selecting official. Typically what we see are two things. One is your resume, and the other one is the answers to the question library that's put up in front of us. Um, the question library, if many of you have applied before, those are somewhat limited. So as Karen mentioned, your resume is where you stand out. That's what separates you from everybody else. So be specific. Stating on there that I owned and operated a private practice that was mixed animal does not give you any specificity. You know, did you supervise people? What was your budget? Uh, all of those requirements that are in there that were necessary for you to do that job are not specified in there. And if you make it through the rating process, which you may or may not, if that's all you provided, uh, the rating official may not have ever had a practice, so they may, may not realize what you did or didn't do. So be very specific. And look at the announcement, look at the requirements of the announcement, what the announcement's asking of you, and make sure you cover those points. So thank you all for joining us today. I, I really appreciate it. We were hoping that this would be beneficial in anticipation of some jobs coming out so that we could get some good applications and give you all the best opportunity you could to succeed in making a successful application. So again, thank everyone for their time and, and Karen, great job and great presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining today's conference. This session has concluded and you made out this connection.